Hello, my name is Dr. Daniel Stowell. I am the editor for the IFTA e-newsletter. And today we have with us Dr. Murita Rastogi, uh, clinical professor and department chair at the Family Institute at Northwestern University. Welcome. Thank you so much, Daniel. And please feel free to call me Mudita. It's a pleasure to be here today and happy to chat with you. Yes. Uh, before we get into why we have brought you here, um, the people that watch this are all over the world, and it's always interesting to hear people talk about their work. So what clinical or mental health practitioner um, do you identify with, and what does that look like where you are in your context? Sure. Um, so I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I have been in the field for several years. Um, and I will say that uh, having been born and raised in India and having lived in both uh, India and Hong Kong before moving to the United States mm. has certainly given me that multicultural, um, you know, global kind of perspective when it comes to families, family therapy, and I integrate uh, those kinds of areas of diversity that multicultural lens in all of the work that I do. Very nice. Uh, are you also seeing clients or are you focused more on academics right now? Oh, great question. Actually, I do have a practice, have had a practice, um, you know, pretty much uh, for at least 30 years now and off and on in different settings. And I work with very di diverse clients. I'm, I'm, you know, geographically, I'm located in Illinois in the United States, but actually have clients from almost every part of the world because mm. this area where I practice in has been extremely diverse. And so I've enjoyed working with people from all walks of life, from different parts of the world originally, and uh, you know, with different gender identities, sexual orientations, religions, et cetera. Excellent, excellent. Well, one of the reasons why we brought you on was to talk about the presentation you're going to be giving in Puerto Rico uh, for the annual conference in April. So what's it called? Who are you presenting with? And tell us a little bit about it. Sure. The title of it is The Crisis of a Global Pandemic, uh, Creating Local Support. Mm. And uh, this, this title, this uh, presentation came out of both kind of watching the pandemic unfold and also my own very personal experiences of having family in India go through this. So, you know, I was, I was initially, of course, uh, acutely aware of the hardships of people across the globe in 2020. But then in 2021, uh, what happened in India brought this, uh, you know, just very, very close to home because, and I don't know if, if all of your viewers are aware of this, but in April and May of 2021, the, the crisis hit kind of this high point in India where, um, you know, just, just there were numerous cases of the Delta variant spreading. Mm -hmm. There were severe medical shortages and there was just, you know, immense psychological trauma because people were losing loved ones for lack of medical care. Mm. They weren't able to find the, the help, the medicines, the oxygen supply that they needed. And, um, you know, traditionally there's been sort of a little bit of a stigma around seeking uh, mental health services in the, in the South Asian community across the diaspora. But in this case, the, the amount of loss that people experienced really shifted that and people were desperate for mental health support as well. So uh, when, I, when I saw how, how devastating that was across um, the cross section of the community in India and, and it actually impacted close family members as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just felt like I had to, to do something more than just maybe, you know, offer, offer verbal support or offer support in, um, a clinical setting. I had to do more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, um, yeah. yeah, what angle, how's this going to show up in the presentation? Sure, sure. So uh, I want to say that I have a co-presenter with me, and she's uh, Dr. Bahara Sahebi. She's um, a clinical assistant professor at the Family Institute at Northwestern University. So she and I put together this, this presentation, and we're going to cover what it was like 
to experience some of the devastation from COVID uh, from you know, an, a kind of a global perspective, and also how uh, we took some steps to reach out to people who were at ground zero, who were, mm. who were dealing with this, and uh, you know, thinking about ways to offer support. To, so to be very specific, I'm, I'm very connected professionally with a group of mental health professionals in India. I've been connected with them for decades, actually. So as I started to read uh, through their texts and, and the, the chats that there was desperation for medical services, for mental health services, um, I, I started to ask them what I could do sitting mm -hmm. here in the United States. And many of them were looking for resources. Many of them were looking for ideas. And so we we continued to, to have conversations around where do we find these resources? What's the best way to offer services? There were people who were telling me that they were getting about 50 to 100 text messages or calls a day. These are mental health professionals wow. being asked for services. Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about, you know, medical professionals who were inundated as well, you know, being, mm -hmm. being asked for, for medical services. And so brainstormed with them around how to maybe uh, provide group services or to share resources how to prioritize and help people get on some kind of waiting lists. And we started gathering resources of, uh, of the kind where we could distribute to other people. Um, and so what that led to is there's, there's, uh, there, were, there, were, there was one major effort that I was aware of and it's titled INDEAR, I-N-D-E-A-R. And that was a group of mental health professionals in the United States who actually collected a group of people who were willing to offer telehealth services in India. So mm -hmm. they were sitting here or in other places in the world and they said, we'll, we'll offer services because there's such a high need. And so in addition to that, there were a couple of other things that I was engaged in. Um, one of the things that I did was I reached out to a colleague at uh, University of Delhi in India and uh, she and I put together of just this ragtag team of grad students and volunteers. I, I would say there were about seven people mm -hmm. and scoured the internet. We scoured our own resources to look for free mental health services that could be available to people. So we created this um, kind of Excel sheet and then we, we launched something called free counseling, uh, free counseling resources. And it's counseling spelled with two L's. Mm -hmm. and and the word counseling was very intentionally chosen because therapy doesn't always ring a bell for people in, in certain countries. And it's, it's on Facebook. And um, I, I will say that I was astonished by the response that it got. So we uploaded these free resources, places where people could go to for free services in India. And without any marketing, I would say that today there are 550 people who've actually joined the group. Mm -hmm. And I and several like dozen people stop by every day. And I would say that there are about three people a day on average that join the group. So that's the pace mm -hmm. at which it's growing. And uh, so it's it's just really gratifying to see that those resources, those those uh, you know awards are getting out there. So that was one thing that we did. Um, another thing that I did was I contacted several academic colleagues here in the US who specialize in mass trauma. And uh, we, we started to put our heads together and think about creating um, a set of trauma modules that could be very easily shared with providers elsewhere. Excellent. So, yeah, so the idea is that you know, if we could create something that has six parts to it, and we could say, okay, here is something that's that's a really um, strong kind of an outline of how you could put this to use with a group of people who need help with trauma, loss, grief, and you could do it via teletherapy. You can follow this this kind of um, you know schedule or outline. And so we're still working on that part of it because it's taking a lot to pull together research to make it in a format that will be very usable. Mm -hmm. but that's another thing that we're working on right now. Excellent. Yes, the, the pandemic being 
not just multi-state, but multinational, fully international experience has really taught and opened our eyes to what the possibilities of greater portability um, rules, laws, availability um, are can be offered for people in every part of the country um, or every part of the world from different countries. So I am one of those 550 people that has joined the your Facebook group just because that's something that I find uh, very valuable. And we'll have a link to all these things um, in the newsletter so that people can find it as well. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to to share about your work in general uh, while we've got you? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thank you for for you know supporting that group. And uh, what I, I just want to say something very quickly that. Um, it's been so interesting to look at who joined the group. And as it turned out, because of the uh, counseling spelling, which is the British way of spelling counseling, we have members in the group that have joined from across the globe in places like Africa, Europe, and so on. Mm. So I'm working with a research assistant right now to actually create free mental health resources in other countries that represent the people in that group. Wonderful. So, yeah, so thank you. So the idea is that we'll we'll create more resources and upload them as time goes on based on who the people are that are in that group. Um, so stepping back, I would say that I have a really strong interest in global mental health. And um, part of what I've done for years is taken a very kind of a, a ecosystemic global perspective and thinking about mental health in terms of thinking about cultural sensitivity, um, the use of local resources, how we partner with uh, folks who are on the ground, things like task shifting that the World mm -hmm. Health Organization talks of. And we know that there's far greater need, far fewer resources in low and middle income countries. Right. And um, part of something that I've published uh, in, in the last year or so has been this a framework that I call the systemic inclusive framework that takes a global perspective to mental health. And so I'm hoping that as time goes on, we can see ways to, to really utilize that in places where it's needed. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. And I, I love the idea of the community also uh, somewhat from a, a groundswell or, you know, from the front lines, people who are in these different places also contributing their own material that is culturally mm -hmm. and contextually specific so that we, again, can all, all learn from each other. Um, yeah. This is a collaborative endeavor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so again, to, you know, as I'm talking with you, Danielle, I'm thinking of other things that happened, particularly in 2020, because it seems so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then early parts of 2021. So we were contacted by different organizations in India because that's where a lot of my professional contacts are. And people said, hey, can you do a short workshop on uh, stress management or loss and grief or dealing with trauma? So I was able to do that all through, through um, just Zoom. And that was really helpful to, to groups of professionals. Some places gathered graduate students in psychology to get this training so that those students could then offer services through their clinics. And that was a way of, of spreading out the services. Um, you know, and I'm thinking in particular of another instance where a, a training uh, a, a training hospital reached out to us in 2021, and they said that their medical providers were completely traumatized, just experiencing a lot of secondary trauma from having to deal with. Um, you know, not being able to offer patients the care that they had been taught to provide. Mm -hmm. And they were seeing people die in front of their eyes. They just, you know, were, were completely in a place where they needed mental health services themselves. So we ended up, my, my colleague at Delhi University and I, we ended up doing a workshop for these medical providers in, in ways to identify um, secondary trauma and in ways to create support amongst themselves, um, how, excuse me, how to engage in self-care. So all of that was, was just, you know, part of uh, what I think the needs were and, and what people were looking for. Well, I'm so glad that you and a lot of your colleagues were able to step up and see the need and find a way to meet at least some of the overwhelming sense of 
despair and difficulty that so many people were going through. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are hopefully all going to gather uh, in Puerto Rico and safely um, in uh, early April. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to seeing you in person.